So for the past two weeks, I've been working on this sculpture, this bike racer and this whole bike. I designed it to be part of a bigger project that I'm working on related to motorsports with a retrofuturistic vibe. And now I'm going to show you my general process on how I painted it. So I generally start with sanding. This model in particular was a huge experiment and uh, I definitely learned important things about 3D printing with it. It's very interesting how this failed mudguard will prevent a lot of trouble in the future just because I broke it and I have to repair it. This project explores vehicles, characters and design with a racing and motorsport theme, which I'm a big fan of. I had to do a lot of sanding on this bike since I tried to print it in just two parts. That made me use a lot of supports and by consequence more polishing. The two parts fitted pretty well, but there was a little bit of deformation in the middle that I had to fix somehow. The Cocoon racing team has a lot of different vehicles and equipment, from bikes to planes. I mean, everything is possible with sci-fi, so why not? After more sanding, I got the seam to hide as much as possible, so I glued the two parts together with CA glue for resin prints. This is the one I used. I also mixed uh, some milliput, which is like a two-part epoxy, and I used it to fill the gap that the two joint parts created, just to hide the seam. Priming the bike was relatively easy uh, with airbrush and AK primer. It leaves a nice matte finish and paint sticks to it pretty well. I started to apply a mix of off-white, chocolate brown and sand colors to the main part of the body. And I don't care that much about going over the edges at this stage. Coming from a painting background, this is how you can achieve interesting color harmonies within a piece. It's called underpainting. I start adding secondary colors with a basic brush. This stage is still a pretty early one, so I don't have to pull out the fancy brushes yet. Oh man, learning to control the smallest brush strokes is very nerve wracking. Although you get used to it pretty fast and you learn how to support your hands for better stability. And this bike is huge, so it was pretty awkward to hold and paint. I was using a mix of the bases that I printed and my hands to hold it in place. Now I'm adding some metallic paint from Vallejo. Since this dissolves better in solvents like alcohol, I'm using a cheap brush. I wouldn't use real hairs with strong solvents. I 
I start adding some more color variation. At this point, this stuff translates naturally from picture painting to miniature painting for me. It's a good way to achieve a more lived in and realistic look. Since nothing in real life is a perfectly mathematical flat color. Now the wheels, where I mixed some of the metallic colors uh, with a mid-gray paint, just to achieve a more matte finish. I want the tires to look as lived in as the body is. I'm adding some material shifts uh, to accentuate even more the usage of the wheels. Here I'm using a different uh, metal color from Vallejo, which is better for airbrushing. And uh, this is why going over the borders is not a huge deal since, I mean, you can lock the colors after when you're satisfied with them. I start working on the lime green accents. This will help make the design feel more iconic and accentuate the retrofuturistic look that I'm going for. What uh, you just saw was me trying to accentuate the overall gradient of the bike, making it even lighter at the top, so I have more range to paint imperfections. With some low adhesion masking tape, I prepare the lower part of the bike for airbrushing. I especially need to add weathering there since it's so close to the ground. I love working digitally as much as traditionally and you will see now and then some old school PS1 inspired 3D animations from the same characters that I paint. I feel it's a pretty good addition to the whole project. Look, after long nights of endless thinking, I've come to the conclusion that I'm addicted to make swirls and spirals and lines to anything I paint. I don't know what it is, but it feels pretty good.
here I decided to go old school modeler and uh, rebuild a defect on the front wheel. The result is definitely not perfect, but is better than a half printed detail in, in my opinion. And there it is, a little bit better. By the way, I have a lot more work on my socials and my website, so whenever you like, go check it out, you might enjoy it. As well, tell me if you want more in-depth videos about how to do art. It could be sculpting, painting, drawing. I might consider a patron for it. I start with the character following similar steps as with the bike. But this time I don't need as much sanding and I quickly can prime and put the print on the bigger base that I designed for bigger characters. Again, I add the main colors with uh, the airbrush for a better and more even coverage. I try to be extra careful with how much paint I use, especially on the character. Lately, I've been exploring more in-depth the Warhammer 40k universe. I think I'm gonna do some explorative project on the different legions. I feel that they have so much personality that it makes me want to study their epic original designs and have my take on them. I think that's an actual cool idea where you can participate, which in itself is kind of epic, no, no, like. Here I start to work on the smaller details with a pair of Kolinsky brushes. They can keep a very thin point while being able to go wider. That translates basically to a bigger brush stroke range. But these as well are the ones that I would advise to dip only in water because they are very sensitive to strong solvents. Painting these green accents, I think it would help tie the two sculpts into one design, making them look like part of a team. I'm a huge fan of uh, earthy colors. You can clearly see that by looking at my other work. These uh, colors always give me some sensation of familiarity and comfort, especially when doing sci-fi stuff. I carefully craft a paper poncho and uh, I use it to mask out the airbrushing. Then I start adding skin tone shifts like warmer tones on the cheeks and cooler tones on the jawline.
I'm trying my best to show as much of the process as I can, but uh, there are parts that I really need to get close. And I'm working on my setup, so it's suitable for that. You are not missing out, though. I managed to record the important parts. For parts like the hair, I start with a bigger brush and work my way down to a fine tip Kolinsky. First, I add the base uh, hair color and I continue with slight value and color shifts to create uh, that feeling of volume. Here I add another paper masking and I give a gradient to the arms. This will simulate the wearing of that part of the suit and it basically acts like decoloration. I'm almost done, so I start working on the boots. Adding some of the smaller details on the boots would help solidify the design of the girl overall. For example, replicating some of the green accents. Adding some warm color wash helps with tying the colors together even better, as well as adding smaller detail to sell the scale even more. Well, that was it. Uh, it was a blast to work on this uh, figure. I would like to continue this uh, series for a long time because they're super enjoyable to work on. As well, I'm already working on a second video, which is more medieval themed, so you might expect that. See you and stay strong.